Hey guys, Thomas from Team Sakurazo here. Come at you guys with another Yu-Gi-Oh! Market Watch. And since I was gone over the weekend, if you guys don't know, I actually went to Anime Midwest. I actually met two people who recognized me from my channel that, I, you know, I've never met before, which is kind of awesome, honestly. One of them actually sold some cards to me, and it was great. If you guys don't know, I was actually vending over there because, fun fact, they had vendors in Magic and Pokemon, but I was one of the only two people... Vending for Yu-Gi-Oh! And I know the other guy personally. It was just hilarious to me. But before we start this video, if you guys can smash that like button and subscribe, that would be great. Uh, especially because this Mark Watch is going to be very, very long and intense. It's going to be about an hour long. So if you guys really appreciate those long Mark Watches, definitely make sure to hit the like button. Uh, if you guys are buying any cards off TCG Player, which some of you actually tell me you guys do in the comment section. And I actually really like that. It actually does mean a lot to me when you guys use the affiliate link and you tell me. It, I really appreciate it, actually. So thank you to those who use the affiliate code whenever they buy cards off TCG Player or anything. It really helps the channel out. And I really appreciate you guys who actually do it because... Like, really, I really mean it. There's, I don't know how to put more emphasis on it. Oh, and consider being a YouTube channel member. Uh, I will talk more about my con experience at the end, since I know you guys want me to get into this Mark Watch. I'll only show one thing now, though. And I actually got a figurine of Kaiba here. I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to see it off the webcam here. But I actually will be doing an unboxing, because what I want to do for my... Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh uh, videos and all that is maybe kind of make a more Yu-Gi-Oh background So maybe I'll have like a figure arena of Kaiba I might do put some other anime merch or some other stuff that I find cool But basically I want to spice up the background so hopefully you guys enjoy that uh, We're gonna get right into it though uh, Access Code Talker from Attorney Code First Edition Secret Rares are a hundred and forty dollars and they are selling even though we're two months away from the tins, two, two and a half months away I was able to pick one up for 80 bucks and I put it for 135 and it, it literally sold within 10 minutes. Like, people don't care about the reprints in two months. They want to play now. Uh, you know, we're coming back to, in my last video, I talked about this. Uh, places are allowed to open up on the 15th fully, you know, do Konami type of tournaments. People want to play. People want to play at events, all that. So I'm not shocked that this is $140. Uh, Legendary Duels, Immortal Destiny booster box. Uh, this, you got a new guy here for about... 205, 210, you got me here for 200, I was able to pick up the box for 75, uh, sealed, which was actually really nice, and then they go right up to 300 once basically me and this guy are gone, uh, reason being is because they're so, this set is actually very unprofitable when you open it up, even when this set was $70, uh, you really couldn't make your money back, it was pull one of the two ultras, uh, if you don't, you literally bust, and this is why it's the wor one of the worst sets in my opinion, right, it was just, it's just dog, right? Uh, but keeping it sealed for collector's value? Now, that's a different story. Uh, I wish I kept one of my sealed boxes, personally. Uh, Evil Hero Adjusted Gold, still like $130, $140 even. You know, I know that Konami's not going to do it, but they need to just put this in the tins. Like, just, just stop, right? Give us like a super rare or something. Uh, we actually have the other one over here too somewhere, but Time Lord, Progenitor of Warpgate, I probably mispronounced this. This card's actually bought out. Uh, you have a light play here for twelve ten, near mints for twelve thirteen dollars then they go up to twenty bucks. Uh, I don't know why this is so much money, considering that I don't even know if Time Lords even play this, because I've seen people play Time Lords, and I've never seen this card summoned, like I've never actually even read it. Uh, so we're going to actually do that right now. Uh, it can't be destroyed by battle or card effects. Most Time Lords are like that. Can't take no battle damage involving this card. Uh, at the end of the damage shift, if this card that was special summoned from the extra deck battled, you can activate this effect. Banish all monsters your opponent controls. Also, for the rest of the turn, how the battle damage your opponent takes. Once returned to the end phase, if this effect was activated this turn, special summon as many monsters as possible that you banish with this card's effect to your opponent's side of the field. Uh, this card doesn't seem good, but again, it's Time Lords. Like, they're not good in general. A uh, little Lady of Lamnet here. Now, I told people grabbing these at $3, $4 is not bad. It is a bit of a 50-50, but it can search out normal traps, essentially. Right? And that's what's really, really good about it. And, you know, if you picked them up, congratulations. They're like 9 bucks here. Uh, going up to 10 quite quickly, actually. Uh, and this is a card that you also need a place to up. That's the thing with these structure decks. Whenever there's a super that's good, or one of the cards in there that's it's a solo printing that's good, it's usually a 3 of. It's not a good 1 of, right? 
And that's the thing with Little Lady of the Lamb. It, like, everyone's opened up Lair of Darkness. It's a very old structure deck, right? People really like the reprints. They reprinted Lair of Darkness, but not this card. It was pretty ridiculous, actually. Skill Drain Lost Art Promotion here uh, is actually going up quite a bit. It's not bought out yet, but they started about 24 25 here. And this was around... You know, $13, $14 respectively, going up to about $16, $17. Now, I told you guys to get this copy, but there was another version you could get for around $22, $23 at the time. And that was actually the Turbo Pack Booster 8 Ultra Rare. If you guys don't know, Turbo Pack's a uh, pack that you're really not going to find sealed anymore nowadays, right? It's very, very rare. And the pull rates are really awful. Like, you guys think OT some of you have think OTS and Astro Pack have bad pull rates. That's hilarious to me. Because you have not you have I could tell you guys have not opened up these packs. You wanna know bad pull rates. It, and by the way, this was the best of its time. If you go further back, like champion pack, it just gets worse and worse the further you go down. But uh near mints are fifty dollars. Uh going up to sixty. So if you guys got these at twenty twos, you won big time. Uh, I tell people everything on Turbo Pack Basically has a bullet to the head, right? At any point, it could get bought out, right? You know. Cursed Necrofield from Immortal Destiny. Uh, I don't know what happened with this card. I remember it being 25, 30, and now they're 40. I mean, I, you got me here for 36 because I got it for 10 bucks. But $40 almost, going up to 45 There's one page of this. This is a collector card, and I did tell people actually to grab a copy of this when it came out. Because when it comes to, like, Necrofear, it is very 50-50. But, you know, it is the third best Ultra Rare in this set. It's the third highest valued card, right? Uh, and it was like $10 or $12 back then. I said it has the potential to go to 2025. Uh, seeing that, again, Immortal Destiny came out such a long time ago... And this card hasn't got a reprint, and it probably won't for a very long time, especially because we're not getting the next Legendary Duels anytime soon. Uh, yeah, these are 36 40 bucks. so if you see them anywhere cheaper, like eBay, whatever, for like 20 or less, go grab them. That's actually something I like to advise. When it comes to very niche cards like this, you might be able, because no one knows, most people don't know that this is actually a $30 plus card now. You could go to like a card shop, see if they have them for 15 16 uh, maybe on eBay they have them for like 20 bucks, right? You could get this card actually a lot cheaper, I bet. But on TCG Player, that's what it is right now. But just remember, as much as I love TCG Player, you, you know, always try to get your best deal anywhere. Uh, and Immortal Destiny is so stupid that this thing's like four or five bucks. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why, but it, it just is. Uh, also, I'll have an opening of Immortal Destiny, by the way, probably at the end of my next Mark Watch, just for those who like that, this set. I'm opening up some packs for free. Uh, Sangan 2009 series is bought out. Uh, 20 bucks for your gold Sangans. Like, does anyone actually want the gold Sangan from 2009? I mean, it's not horrible gold rare, but... Eh, actually, I want to check out this as well, really quickly, since we're here. Uh, Scapegoat Ultimate Rare. Uh, these are, yep, still undervalued. $90. Guys, I told people, actually, in a 5 card 7-year trade buyer, $25 is free money. You get a playset or more. Uh, I know a guy who got a playset, and he was very, very happy. He was able to actually uh, pay off his car bill, and he's not in the best uh, place financially. Uh, so something like that goes a long way. So sometimes, you know, if you have a little leeway money and you know there's a good investment, sometimes you got to go for it. Uh, Sangan Turbo Pack Booster 6 now. Uh, you have Maw Plays for 23. Uh, I don't really like that, but, you know, Lightly Plates 37s, 38s. Uh, man, these were 10, like, a year ago. That's the funniest part. Like, I was trying to sell, like, a $40 card and a... No, it was, like, a $35, $40 card and this Sangan for, like, 30 bucks. He, he needed it really badly, and I probably should have got from him, but... Yeah, $40 for near mint. Now, I don't know where this is going to go. Uh, there is a Beckett 9, actually. Uh, we'll take a look there. I know a lot of people don't like Beckett, but... Hey, I think this looks cool, personally. Yeah, it's a... Uh... Oh, it tells you everything, too, here. That's actually cool. Uh, corners, 9. Surface, 9. Center, yeah. Edges, 9.5. Okay, so... It's really like a 9.1, 9.2, but, you know, that's cool. And a lot of people don't like Beckett, and I plan on making a video about Beckett versus PSA and all that. It's just, it's a very easy video to mess up with, and I have enough people where it's like, if I'm wrong, whoever's going to watch that's going to be wrong too, and I don't want to do that. But I do have some actual awesome top 10s for you guys coming out soon, actually. 
uh, like top 10 Hobby League cards I think you guys should buy, or top 5, that's going to be a banger. Uh, Evil Hero Malicious Bane here. I know I haven't pulled up somewhere. Uh, still Cancer. Like, again, if you have this card and you're playing Heroes, stop playing Heroes and sell this card. You could literally just play something else. Like, Prada Play Verde Anaconda here from Dual Overload is $45, $46. Not only is this card basically used in almost every single fusion deck imaginable, but, uh, like, including Should All Invoked, actually, they do play a copy of this just to get to the fusion, just in case you can't. But not only do Shut All Invoked play this, but every Dragoon deck needs multiple copies of this. It's only 28 listings, too. Uh, this card could go to something really crazy. I think this card has, actually has the potential to go up to $60. But, you know, I feel like Pre Play Anaconda should have always been a 40 something dollar card. And if you want the card, you had literal years. So, uh, how can we Fibrax now? Uh, AKA Crystal Neal Fiber. But I, I tried for you guys, right? That's all that matters. Uh, Ultras are $36 here. Going up to about $40. Uh, it has been... Uh, guys, I, I, you're going to feel old. It's been two years since this card came out. Because it came out in March 2019. And that doesn't feel like too long ago to me. But yeah, we've had Hulk for two years. Uh, that's quite insane. Uh, I believe... Dual, no, maybe Dual Overload is 2020. I hope it's 2020. I feel really old. No, Dual Overload is 2020. I'm 99% sure. Uh, if not, I really don't want to be wrong. But yeah, $37 here. So they're finally picking up value like I thought. But like in the next year, it's probably going to get another reprint. Uh, it does have an Ultimate Rare version that I would might as well look at uh, here. Ultis, about 95 bucks, going up to about $100. Uh, not too bad, actually, for Ultimate Rare Crystal Neal Fiber. Now, this card does look really awesome. I don't think Konami will actually hit this card because it needs to do things. And I'm not seeing it. It really it really got hard switched out of the meta. And a lot of people don't want to really admit that. But Neil Fiber right now is not as good. It does depend on the tuners in the game. Uh, but it's still not that card. And, and, you know, it is, you know, you can interrupt it, all that, you know. Celine Queen of Master Magicians is... $16, and I can actually tell you why. Uh, this card is free access code, because in any deck, example, Sky Strikers, because Sky Strikers tend to play a Selene and a access code talker, along with sometimes they play Valor, and other spellcasters are like, you know, a uh, subtype of hand trap, uh, because it includes a special, you summon this card, right, and you essentially are able to special summon a spellcaster, and you're able to link climb with this card in Sky Strikers, right? Because them putting like two monsters on the field, uh, you know, it's not too difficult. Three, it definitely can be, uh, but four is definitely very hard. But Celine helps them kind of get over that gap. Now they also could go with the Borosaur with this, but the point is, this allows Striker to have access to Link Fours, uh, and it helps them a lot with their, you know, they don't have to use as much card advantage, right? That's why this card went up, along with, you know, if Pendulums ever do something, like, I can tell you the new pen deck from Ancient Guardians probably uses this. I think they're actually spellcasters. So, yeah, Fantastical Dragon Phantasme, uh, coming out from Dual Overworld now, and this is $7. Now, if you guys remember, I told people to pick these up at a dollar, because this was a hand trap where Phantasme is amazing, it's just not good this format. Might not be good next format, but might be good the format after that. Now we're seeing Phantasme really, really good, right? Uh, you know, 650, right? And like a lot of people sometimes they come to my channel and they think to themselves that's all about the big games. We're gonna buy a fifty, sixty dollar card and it's go to the moon. And yeah, that does happen more often than you would actually surprise, but that's just because I'm amazing, right? But with vending and other Yu-Gi-Oh stuff like that and like getting value your best value out of this game, you need to look at the penny stonks as well. Because listen, if you picked up like 10, 12 phantasmas like I did. I made about six, seven times my profit, right? Six, uh, seven times of what I put into this card. And that's actually quite a bit, right? And that's, you know, a, do a couple of bucks, like $10, right? That's like, you know, maybe a lunch, right? Or something, you know, maybe a dinner, right? It's not like putting $80 where that's an electric bill, right? But I'm actually getting a good return later, right? And it's a lot easier to get that return. Uh, I actually do want to look at secrets though, because I bought... Uh, one other thing I bought was secrets at twenty twenty one dollars, and I told people to get first edition secrets from for twenty one twenty two dollars. It'll go back to up to a hundred one day, and some of you actually did. A lot of you actually did listen on this one. I think this is the most ca the card that you guys listened to me the most, like one of them. 
Uh, first in light play, 35. Okay, actually, that's not awful. These were these got bought out at 50s for near mints. $40. Okay, 40 42 So, hey, you doubled your money. That's not bad. This card, by the way, if you feel bad that you didn't get it, guess what? You should grab it now because it could go to 60 to 80 literally the next day, right? This card's played right now, and whatever happens in Yu-Gi-Oh, hand traps are going to be good, and they're going to be bad, right? Uh, Droll's going to be good. Skullmeister's going to be good, right? You know, a lot of hand traps are just not that good. Sometimes become amazing in the format, right? Phantasma is a great hand trap. It just gets switched out, right? Now it's the time for Phantasma. Guess what? We're going to have a time where Phantasma is not played for maybe six months. Maybe it's a year. Who knows, right? Again, depends on the format. But then when it's played, the prices are going to skyrocket. The biggest tip I could give you guys, and the big one of the biggest takeaways from this market watch, is that get hand traps when they're not being played. So right now, all right, don't don't wait till next format. Don't wait till next ban list. What's not being played right now? Ghost Ogre? Okay. Maybe we could look at Ghost Ogre, right? That's just an example, right? Uh, Dark Magician Girl, oversized from Dual Overload. Oh, by the way, last thing I want to say... Uh, is if you if I'm you guys are wondering why I'm like stirring a little bit I'm a little out there I'm gonna be honest I got messed up really hard at that con in the good way I I got drunk both nights I got you know let's say your boy was enjoying a little bit of the uh, the natural earth you guys can figure it out too so you know I you know I got back both nights at like four in the morning it was it was fun but it took a toll on me I did get third place however uh when I was uh completely out of my mind, which was hilarious, but Dark Magician Girl oversized here. About $6 here, uh, going up to seven fifty. and if you guys don't know what this is, uh, in Dual Overload, they actually give you these big cards, and uh, I'll show you guys another one uh, here, actually, the Dark Magician's oversized here. Uh, for four fifty, going up to $8. Now, the reason why these are going up is actually because a lot of people, especially a lot of casual players, actually really like these kinds of cards. I actually did as well. I actually have one or two uh, that I had. Sadly, not anymore. I couldn't bring it with me. But when I opened up my case of Dual Overload, which I gave away a needle fiber in, um, I actually got a, quite a few of these. And what I ended up doing was Jake, uh, Team Sakura Jake, if you guys don't know, he's one of the team members of Team Sakura. So he actually helps fund some openings too. It's really nice. And I'm going to try to get him in some more videos, actually, like another Marco Watch. Because uh, you guys liked him the one time I brought him on. Uh, but uh, I, his sister or something runs a daycare. And some of the kids are actually like Yu-Gi-Oh. There are children who like Yu-Gi-Oh, guys, believe it or not. And they like drawing and they like the old cards. And I decided to do something good. And I just said, hey, you know what? They're 50 cents or a dollar. Give them all away. I'm going to keep these two because I like them. It was actually these two that I pulled up on screen. And, you know, the kids really, really enjoyed them actually a lot to the point where... Uh, he asked me if I had any more uh, that I was willing to give. Uh, and yeah, just a little fun story. You know, it's always nice to do something for the community. Sky Strike and Maneuver, Scissor Cross. Now, I have this in my five cards out of your trade binder, which did not reach the light goal. This is the first five cards out of your trade binder that did not reach the light goal. I'm going to end up doing a second one, though, only because I ended up uploading another video very fast to cover it along with... As you guys could tell, the construction is almost basically done. I'm in my old setup, and now I'm able to film a lot more, higher quality, uh, all that. So, look forward to that. But Scissors Cross here, about $1, $2. Uh, there's only four pages, though. Now, that's what I really want to highlight here. Uh, when I talked about this card, there were about seven pages. Then they quickly went to $2, $3. Uh, they went up to two here. Second page, though. Let's, let's take a look. Uh... Okay, so 250, all right? Nothing nothing crazy so far. But then they they go up to the 3 4 5 dollar mark here. This card is going to age like fine wine. If you guys are looking for the penny stock of the century, here it is. Uh Dark Magician Girl, Legendary Collection 3 Yugi's World here. So I want me to peep these. I know these are ridiculous. Near mints are 98. Uh well, you have two here for about 100 closer to 100 bucks here. First mob play for 135 136. First edition near mint is going to be something horrible, isn't it? First I'd like play, $275, going up to $300. You know, and it sells. As you guys see here, this card is selling. I mean, not often, but it is actually it's going 6-1. Yeah, okay, so three in a one month. But it does sell. Like, collectors really like this version of Dark Magician Girl because the secret rares from Legendary Collection are actually really nice, and they're very hard to get, actually. 
uh, as well. In fact, I actually kind of want to look at one other Dark Matrix goal that's similar that I think you guys should be looking at. Is the premium gold. Now, a lot of collectors are like okay with this version. They like it. They kind of like it. Uh, first and light plates are $40 going up to about 50 for light play. Uh, but this is a card that's kind of similar to the Secret Rare. Has the same artwork, right? Came out around the same time. I think it was like two years later, but around the same month. These could get bought out as well. So if you want another Dark Magician Girl similar and you want to pay 300 getting a Gold Rare, even though I know we don't like Gold Rare for $50, is not bad, especially since this card is probably going to age like fine wine. It could go to about two, dollars $300 just like the Secret Rare in about maybe a year or two. Who really knows? Uh, Cyber Dragon Hearse from Cyber Knight Horizon. Now, if you guys have not been looking at Cyber Dragons lately, uh, there's some money. Hers right here are $11. And when this card came out, it was around this price, actually. And that it, it didn't take too long to drop to about 7 8 which was more tolerable. But when we got the reprint, it was actually, you know, this was like a $2 card. People were like, whoa, that's crazy. It should never be a 2 or $3 card. That's way too much. And I'm like, I'll go up to 5 6 uh, you know, and now there's seven, eight, right? Well, at once this one's gone from me, uh, eight dollars, by the way. So, eight forty-five. Uh, as you notice, we were actually at ninety-nine point nine. Now we're back up to a hundred. Uh, I got things settled with someone. It'll be, it'll be a story time. I'm gonna have like a bad vendor story time, uh, as like a funny little series because you guys do want to see the JD story, and I plan on doing that very soon. Mystic Piper solo print out of Extreme Victory, like. I'm shocked Konabi did put this as a super rare or like a rare is some type of garbage set at this point. Uh, you know, lightly plates are 22. First of light play is about 24 here. But yeah, actually got two cheap copies for 21, 22 respectively. First edition near mint star, about 25 here. If this card is ever does anything, because you could technically, all you have to do is tribute this card and then reveal one card. Uh... Uh, card. If that card is a level one monster, you could draw one card, right? So it's not, uh, what's it called to draw and reveal the card you drew. That is very specific, okay? A lot of people think that actually. No, if you have, let's just say, you know, a random level one tuner, like say Spore, for example, right? You have Spore in your hand, right? Or Valor, right? You activate Mystic Piper, you, uh, draw a card. Let's pretend your card's like a spell card, like your Nadir Servant, right? You reveal your Veiler, you draw another card, right? And this card does not be, need to be normal summoned, right? Or anything. It is a hard once per turn, but that's fine. Because you can just, again, you can one for one this, right? And then you could just go through your deck, bait if your opponent has like a hand trap or something. If they decide to negate the Mystic Piper, right? Because at that point, I feel like if they negate the Mystic Piper, it's because they're really scared that you're playing an FDK. Because uh, uh, players know how this was used. And they might just waste the answer. I feel like this card actually does have a lot of potential. But people don't want to, like, play with it. Uh, in Fortnite Tierra, uh, Clash of Rebellions here, Ultra Rares are about 17 bucks here. Just reprint this card already. No one should be paying this much. Uh, Ultimate Rares, though, are actually settling down at $23. Uh, 23s, but they're quickly going up to about $28. I understand that. We'll look at first set near mint though, uh, just to make sure first set near mints are. Oh my god, it's gonna be something stupid. Oh man, thirty-seven. Okay, get your first set lightly played for twenty-two if you want this card. But if I were you, I wouldn't play Infernoids or Gain Infernoids. Trap Trick Sarah from Battles of Legends Heroes Revenge is thirty-five dollars and for lightly played. Uh, near mints are about thirty-eight, thirty-nine dollars. Uh, I'll just say this right now. I don't know why, why Konami just decided not to reprint this card. They have to, because Trap Trick players need three of these. You could play with two, going to be honest with you. You you really could play with two, right? So you need a minimum of two, if but three is preferable. And they have to shill out about 105 to $120 for their playset. That's crazy to me. This card, if you have spare copies, I would sell this, because it's very, very inflated right now. And a reprint's probably around the corner, because... You know, we got Ghost of the Past. They reprinted the uh the one card we all we all wanted as a reprint as a Ghost Rare, right? And that was about you know a few months ago. So I think that Secret Rares from Battles of Legends Heroes Revenge, you know, they're up on the chopping block. So, and they have reprinted a bit of this set before. But if Sarah gets reprinted, I expect these to drop to like ten dollars. 
I ended up getting a place of lightly plates, and they're very lightly played, by the way. It's just the back at the side a little bit. Uh, I got my place up for 55, which was nice. But, you know, if you have this card and you want to hold it, just know that you're holding it because you like the card, because you're going to lose money on this fast. Uh, Gem Knight Seraphonite, uh, Dual Terminal 7. Uh, these are actually six, seven dollars here, going up to about eight dollars, and they only have two pages. A lot of people are really expecting this card to have some type of way or some type of use eventually, like in, you know, if Brilliant Fusion ever comes back, which it really can't, but. You know, something along those lines. So people are, are grabbing their DT copies. This was a dollar for a very long time. And I said, you know, for a dollar, it's not a bad penny stonk. But don't expect it to go up very fast. And, you know, it did take a, a long time. Like, we've had Brilliant Fusion Band for a long time. But this is going back to a, quite a couple, uh, a little bit. This was like, I think it peaked at 15 bucks. Uh, Saizo here. Uh, this guy I thought was Bulk Hollow. And he's not. He's $5. That's crazy. Me. Going up to 6 so, yeah, if you have ninja stuff, it's worth money, man. Uh, Toon Dark Magician from the Dark Illusion here. Uh, first editions are three thirty-seven. Uh, going up to about four bucks here. There's only five pages. I feel like a lot of the Toon hype died down, but I feel like there's a lot of hidden value in this card. I actually would get a place on this card while you can. Uh, Toon Harpy Lady Collector's Rare. Uh, this is a Collector's Rare. I feel like is a bit undervalued, actually. Uh, near mints are 70. Uh, I got mine for basically free. Uh, first editions, though, are 174, going up to 210. This is not a bad collector's rare to get. I mean, it's a tune card, it's a Harpy Lady card, you know, that's two and one right there. Collectors will eat this card up. I'm at the point where I feel like even getting these unlimiteds right here is not a bad idea. You do have a wall here of 11, right? But... You know, a wall for a collector's rare isn't that much because they'll go up to 100 quite soon. Uh, you do actually have the regular versions as well. Uh, I believe those are like 2 bucks as well. Actually, well, look how those are aging. Uh, well, dollar near mints here for about dollar twenty, but once that one's gone, they're like a dollar fifty. Yeah, they might go. They're going to go to the $2 mark eventually. Toon Blackluster Solder from Toon Chaos here. Is calm down a little bit. Uh, unlimited for 38. First sets for 40. Uh, not too bad for this guy. Honestly, I should have just kept all mine. Because this sold with it like hotcakes. And it always really has. Like this is a card that like it really is one of the best collector cards that has come out. In probably quite a few. Maybe not a few years. But of its year for sure. Right. And it's aging just fantastically. Uh, Toon Bookmark from Toon Chaos here. Uh, first and mints are still stupid. $28, $29. I don't know why this has not settled. Uh, I think that's absolutely ridiculous. But, uh, you have bookmarks here. Collector rares, uh, $50 here. But first eds are going up to about $75. First eds were $50 when the buyout first initially happened. I told you, if you guys want this card now, pay $20 for the collector's rare. Trust me, it's going to be worth it. And if you did, hey... It's about a... Oh, I'm sorry if you guys hear fireworks in the background, by the way. It is 4th of July, by the way. Happy 4th of July to you guys. $70 here, but these are new sellers. The first verified one is going to be 80 bucks, So, about $30 increase. And it is going up, actually. I actually invested in the cheaper tune cards, actually, for my first set of tune chaoses. Uh, Bingo Machine Go, Legendary Duelist Season 2. Uh, first sets are $10, going up to 12 So, if you got this card when I told you, hey... This card's going to go up like crazy. Keep them at $6. Congrats. You doubled your money. That's not the only thing from Legend of the Duelist Season 2. Garden Rosemary. I told people to get these at $4. Are now $7. Uh, and going up. Again. Uh, this card's actually more crucial than ever. Especially if you want your uh, quick launch and all that. The combo is actually a lot better now. Because you only have one Striker Dragon. Well it's not better. It's just. It's a more viable combo. I should uh, rephrase myself. So people are actually looking back at. Garden Rose made now for a certain um, builds of, of Dragon Link. So, if you don't have your copy, this card, again, it searches out Black Ro Black Garden, which I I need to see something if I want to blow my brains out again. Uh, here we go. We got Crossroads of Chaos here. Uh, Lightly played 250, near mints are 4, understandable. First sets. I, I just need to see. Okay, you have a Lightly played for $4 here. Not bad. 
And they're made for $20. Well, you got a new seller here, right? But 20 30 40 90 Hey, not bad, but if you want that $4 copy, it's really not a bad grab. Uh, secret rares are about $17, not $18, $19. $19. This is the copy people want to play with because it looks great. Because I'll be honest, the original Black Garden, it doesn't look bad, but I if it comes to what I would rather collect and play, I'd rather have the secret rare for play, but getting a first ed from Crossroads of Chaos is definitely better. I won't even bother with Unlimited too much. Uh, Blue Eyes Abyss Dragon from Legend of Duel Season 2. Now, I told people this was the much better card than Afterglow. And, you know, Photon players always have to come out of the woodwork and say something stupid. They were like, oh no, bro, Afterglow Dragon is the better one. Oh, it's going to age way better. And I'm sitting here like, bro, did you start playing Yu-Gi-Oh! yesterday? You think Photon's going to beat Blue Eyes? If that ever happened, I would actually have to sit th the community down and talk to them. But yeah. $21 here, essentially. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, Afterglow, though, you know, what, what this was supposed to be Blue Eyes, is $10 more than it should be. Uh, going next here. Harpy Perfumer, Legendary Duel Season 2. These are about $7.70, going up to about $9 after these two sales, actually. nine ten. I told people that when these were $3, this is when you want to pick this up because if Harpies ever do something, this card's going to shoot to like a $15 card overnight. And while it's not $15, it's slowly going up. And remember, we've had Legend of Duel Season 2 for less than a year still, and all the promos have now doubled within a year. That's how you know you've made a long-lasting good product. Urgent Schedule from Legend of Duel Season 2. These are about $10.50. Uh, going up to like, yeah, about 10, 10 50 here for send your meds. People love trains. Like, they love trains. I don't know where it comes from, but bees knees. Uh, Super uh, Dreadnought Rail Cannon Juggernaut Libre. Same thing, 8 50 here for secrets. Uh, draw, but yeah, again, Legendary Duel Season 2. If you guys find sealed, I would keep sealed or at least grab it so you could open it up. Get a good promo. Uh, because the singles are actually very good too. Drone Lockboard Gold Rare from Maximum Gold here are about $16, going up to about $19. Now, I told people actually to grab these on pre-release for like 3 4 bucks, And uh, it got bought out something crazy, and everyone was really upset. And that happened like 2-3 hours after that video. And I, I, I remember one guy saying, yeah, bro, I bought like 15 And I'm like, okay, that's great. Uh, you made a lot of money, so good job. But Droll is just so good right now, especially against Tribe Brigade, that it needs to be this amount of, of uh, value. In fact... I kind of want to look at ulties today. Uh, see where they're at today. You know, I always knew it was good to get them at 35. I, I, man, I should have just got my third. No, that was that was my mistake. 220 today. Okay, not bad. And it's selling as you guys see here for a lot of cash. Ghost Bell and Haunted Mac Mansion maximum gold tier gold rares are about. 645 going to about seven dollars here. I mean, this is played right now and. For good reason, right? It stops a lot of what's in the format right now. It's actually not too bad against Virtual World as well. Uh, it helps against uh, stuff like, you know, um, sh uh, Shadows as well, like Shadow Invoked. Uh, it helps against, uh, you know, Tri Brigade you could do a couple things with, but it's not the best against Tri Brigade. At least that's how I find it personally. Some people might argue that, but, like, I, I there's so many times where I wish I had a different hand trap. Like, not Ash, but... A different hand trap, like Droll. I would always rather prefer Droll or Nib or something like that, right? Um, you know, it's actually not bad against Trap Tricks too much either, but... Apollosa Bow, the God's alternate art here. These have now doubled to about $9. Now, I told people the Gold Rare is what you should get, not the Reprint Ultra Rare. Uh, which we're actually going to take a look at that right now. Uh, Apollosa is still played. It's just... If, if a deck can't... If the Meta decks can't play consistently... It's going to get swapped out. We're actually going to look at the Prismatic as well. Ultra Rares are actually high. 850 Going up to $9. So this, this version went up too. But I think a lot more players would rather play the Gold version. Uh, Secret Rares though. First edition near mints are 27 to 31 I still think this is very cheap for Apollosa. I think that this card can easily go back up to about $60. Right? Not full original value. But... You know, something along those lines, if enough people want the original Beautiful Secret Rare. And then Starlight Rares. Man, if you got this at 500 boy oh boy, do I envy you. Uh, this card is also too expensive 
the play at this point, in my opinion. Thirteen hundred dollars. Uh, you have a Portuguese one here. Uh, I want to see. Does anyone actually have a PSA? Nope. No, they don't. But there's a European print. Like I'm being honest with you, I don't know. Like while that looks gorgeous, why on earth do you think because it's European print, it's worth like fifteen hundred more dollars? Like what? That's not how this game works, buddy. Your preprint is cool, but it's not worth more. Borosaur Dragon Alternate Art Gold Rare from Maximum Gold here. These are now five, six dollars. I was pick. I actually picked up quite a few of these for like a dollar or two, actually. I don't know why this card's worth money, but I think people finally remember that Boral Sword's still a good card. Access Code is still great too, but you have to remember that these cards do similar things yet get to the same end goal. So because they do similar things, certain decks are gonna like them even more, right? Especially because this card can attack twice, it's going to have an edge that Access Code can't overcome sometimes, but... Soul Servant from Legendary Duel's Magical Hero. Um, This is about $28, $30. I'm going to admit it right now. I read this card wrong. I thought it was going to be around $10, $15, and then eventually it might go a little higher, but not for a while. I mean, it has been a while since Magical Hero, but yeah, $30. No thank you. Ghost Sister and Spooky Dogwood, Dark Neostorm here. I want to show you guys something cool for this, actually. Uh, near Mints here are about... About six seventy, close to $7. But once we put this filter on for First Eds, actually... Uh, Light Plates are like nine fifty, but Near Mints are ten thirty. So First Edition Unlimited actually have quite a bit of a difference here. So if you guys want the, the Ghost Girls, which I believe they're all very collectible... I don't think... Dogwood is going to be played ever, unless Aromages do stuff, because it's great in Aromage, right? And that's the only real deck that I would play I play my Dogwoods in, is Aromage, right? And some people still don't like it, but man, when you main deck this card, and they decide to pop off for no absolute reason, no, some, some players are too scared to play through this, like, they think it's Max C, it's hilarious. Nadir Servant here, uh, about 72, 75, I, I'm, this is probably going to dip to like 40 when the tins come out. Uh, Ecclesia's Ultra Rares are about 21 bucks here, uh, 22s respectively, going up to about 24, again, gonna get reprinted. Uh, Titanclad here, Rise of the Duelist here is about 10.50, going up to 12 dollars, going up to 13.14 actually. So this card is actually rising quite a bit here, uh, because, again, they use this, and every, it kind of has Rise of the Duelist uh, Syndrome, where it's just gonna go up because it says Rise of the Duelist. Right, it just it is what it is. Number thirty, Hope Harbinger, Dragon Titan, uh, Titanic Galaxy. This reminds me of this girl who uh, I saw this on Twitter that couldn't remember the name of the Titanic, and I was just like, and she wasn't being stupid on purpose, guys. Trust me. Uh, gold rares are thirteen dollars here. Uh, the gold rare actually doesn't look bad. I've seen it in person; does not look too bad. Supers from Cybernetic Horizon, though. Are about four, five, six dollars. Go up to about seven here. Again, is a rank eight that during either player's turn you negate a spell and you don't detach for that. But the best part is you attach it as a material. So if you negate and engage, they can't Kagari it because it'll be attached as a material to this, right? It actually does work in certain decks very, very well. Um, and you, what you do is you detach to change. Uh, the, um, when a post launcher clears attack, you detach and change the attack target to, uh, this and perform damage calculation. People don't know that, so it's instantly, right? So, it helps protect your other monsters, right? And if face-up XYZ you control is destroyed by battle card effect, you can target a face-up XYZ monster you control, it gets attack equal to one of those destroyed monsters' original attack, and that's permanently, right? So, what you got, so a lot of people don't know it's to other two effects, but it negates a spell. If you play an XYZ deck and... Something dies, right? Uh, well, a card is destroyed by battle card effect, including yours, right? And it's actually kind of beefy. This gains is like 5,500, right? Uh, along with... Um, you do have to target, though. You know, it's not too bad, though. Uh, Ubel, Seekers from Legendary Collection 2. Uh, first edition, lightly played. Well, I'm going to go with first. Edition, I don't really care about the limits here. Uh, 1346... Right, for lightly paid, but first and near mints are actually going to run you about $20 here. People like Ubel, and this is one of the highest rarities of Ubel. Uh, you also have Ubel the Ultimate Nightmare here. Uh, first eds are about 
you know, 12 bucks here, uh, going up to about, well, yeah, about 15 bucks here. So if you want your secret U battle stuff, you're paying quite a bit of a penny. But I do want to go over U battle of the ultimate. I remember from Phantom Darkness because I think this is the best version to grab because I just love the old printing. Uh, lightly plates here for 26, going 27, going up to $50 very quickly. Lightly plates at 26 if you guys want it. That's not bad. First set light plates are 150. First set near mitts are well going to about two hundred dollars. So lightly plates here. If you guys want to pick these up, that's not too bad actually. I think that even unlimited Phantom of Darkness is worth picking up. Advanced Dark. Now this is actually one of my favorite secrets. I do not like Crystal Beasts too much. I used to when I was a kid, but not anymore. Like the archetype's bad, right? It's kind of cringy even. But I always loved Advanced Dark. It just has really great artwork. This picture doesn't do it justice. Uh, lightly well, you have Lightly Plates here. Literally, two, three bucks for Unlimited, right? First Ed Mod's about four bucks here. But once you get to, like, the First Ed Lightly Plates, you got, like, you know, six bucks here. Going up to about sevens, right? Going up to about eight, nine right here. First Ed is going to run you about $16. So we are at the point where you need to look at sexual so old secrets and think to yourself, do I want it or not? Because... The ship, is, it hasn't sailed, but, you know, they're calling the last call. So make sure you have your stuff. Uh, oh, yeah, we pulled up droplets. Uh, triple Tactics Talent, Rise of the Duels here. 118, I mean, if you want more Call by Grave, get this card. Draw two. Forbidden Droplets, Secret Rares. 125, 130. Once this card gets reprinted, it's going to be very, very good for the player base. Ulti Forbidden Droplets, didn't settle yet. Lightly played for 250, near mint for 273. I don't know what to say. Like, I actually, I'll, I'll look at OTS Pack 16 and I'll, uh, I'll cringe a bit. So, Cyber Dragon here, uh, ultimate rares are about 240. Ah, uh, Firewall is only like 60, so it sells at 60. That's actually not a bad price point for Firewall, but then you got the supers here that are again. Very, very good super suit. I would pick up King of the Skull Servants here, right? Like, every pack, you're going to get a decent super, like, half the time. So, uh, Hobby League here. I actually pulled up some Hobby League cards I actually really liked. But, again, before I continue, guys, I will have a top five Hobby League cards you should invest in. Some of them will be here. Some of them won't. Monster Reborn, though. These are about... Uh, Lightly Plates are about 25. Uh, Near Mints are about... Well, actually... That's a new seller. Lightly plates are 45 48 And then near mints are about... A lot of lightly played, but a lot of Hobby League cards just end up being lightly played. Uh, near mints are... Yeah, there's one for 85 Okay, so what I'm going to say for Hobby League is aim for lightly played. Because someone actually... I think it was Seto Kaiba's bank account actually that said this in the comment section. Where a lot of Hobby Leagues come out light play. Some of them... A lot of them come out very light play. Some of them are still near mint, but some of them do come very light play or, or more light play. So just get the light play and be done. Don't aim for near mint every time on these. Reinforcement of the army is bought out. Uh, light plates are at about 24 here. Near mints are about $50. So if you have your Hobby League Rotas and you got them for cheaper, good job. Torrential Tribute Hobby League 4 here. These are about $25. Near mints are about 32 you know, going up to about... Yeah, going quickly up to like 37.40 here. Personally, I'm shocked this isn't like 70 or 80 because not only is this an old classic card, but Torrential is one of the big three traps that are actually used to this day. If you guys don't know the big three traps, every deck at one point for years ran one Torrential, one Bombless, one Kavuls. They were all limited. So, yeah. Uh, Dekochi, the Battle Chanted Locomotive. People know this actually has a Hobby League version. And their money, they're $20. People would rather have this than the ulti. And you know what? Ultis are a little too much money. But ultis look better in my opinion. Scapegoat, Hobby League 5. It's not always about the ulti here. About 19 bucks, going up to about 25 So, hey, this could be the next ulti scapegoat. So if you want to get a high rarity scapegoat, i grab this. Mystic Tomato, Hobby Leagues are about twelve sixty three for Lightly Plades. Near mints are about nineteen dollars, only two pages too, and Mystic Tomato should be on the chopping block to actually get a lost art of 
as well. But I think people are either going to want the Lost Art or the Hobby League. And those two are going to kind of compete with uh, what players want. It's going to be kind of more up to personal choice. Uh, personally, I would probably rather play with the Lost Art, depending on, as long as it looks good. Because some Lost Arts just come out and they don't look as good as I thought they would. But Hobby League, I mean, that's something you don't see every day. If you guys don't know, Hobby League's a very safe investment, in my opinion. Uh, Dark Belter the Terrible. Now, this is a card that should be worth a lot more. Uh, $13 here, going up to about 14 for Near Mint. So you actually grab a Near Mint copy. Not too bad. Now, this is one of the cards I really highly expect you guys to grab. Because you have Super Rare here from Legacy of Darkness. And that's cute, but... Uh, how much are first sets of you? I'm not really interested in, like, garbage. 1348, and then near mints are 15. But that is from new sellers. Well, actually, no, 15 bucks. So it's between this and the Hobby League. I would grab both, personally. Legacy of Darkness, first set, super, dark, balter, the terrible. $15. I would actually grab the originals, for sure. Marauding Captain, right? This is a f favorite of mine. Uh, these are about 15 bucks. Uh, I remember I was able to grab one for like $2, and I was so happy that day. It was like two months ago. Uh, because I really like Marauding Captain. I just, this is a card I played around with a lot when I was a kid, and I just, I like it because of that reason. Uh, it is used in certain formats, but they're very old. They're ancient. Uh, Neospatial Grand Mole Hobby League 7. Now, these are, mob play here for 3 40 Not bad, actually, for mob play, you know, 3 4 bucks. Uh, that's a very good price for mob play. Lightly plates are nine, but there's only one. Near mids start at fourteen dollars, go up to fifteen. It's not a bad version of Grand Mole, but if you guys want another version of Grand Mole, I think DTs are very undervalued. Uh, there are some walls here, but a dollar here, dollar fifty, and this card it does pop up in the meta sometimes. Along with something I used to do back with this card is I made one in Shadal because the normal summon is really like okay. This was back when we didn't have Shadal invoked, by the way. Right? This was just shit all. Right? What this gave you access to is, number one, you have access to Shekinaga. And Shekinaga was Psalm Strike back then. But because of the wording, they made sure that your Shadal gets the effect when you send it. Right? So let's pretend they activate, you know, a, uh, a monster effect. You negate, destroy it. You send Shadal Hedgehog. Good job. You get your search. You send Falco. Good job. Falco's going to special summon himself. Right? You guys get the point. Uh... But this card also, what it lets you do is if you cannot play or there's like a floodgate card, it helps you bounce this back. And then you could like poly it and make Shekinaga, right? Like it's, you're still in battle phase, so you can still do your Shadal fusion plays, all that, right? Uh, Shadal's play a lot in the battle phase, right? If you're a Shadal player and you don't play much in the battle phase, you're doing something wrong. But this card helps because it's also a recurring normal summon, right? Uh, and I don't know, I, I think it's quite good. At least forces an interrupt. Uh, Legendary Ocean Hobby League One. Uh, yeah. So this guy had like f sixty copies at one point. Now he's down to twenty-seven. Uh, it's not a bad Hobby League card to grab if you want it, but it's more just kind of look cool. And then last card of the day, Lord of the Lamp. Uh, this is the cheapest Lost Art you could get, and people don't even know this exists. But it's one page, and uh, hey. Near Mint for 59 cents. You might as well not even get these. Uh, Near Mint's 26. Hey. Free. I mean, and by free, I mean complete utter garbage. Like, look, look at those sales. That's just, uh I didn't even know this was a Hobby League until I pulled it up, actually. You know, you learn something new every single day. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the Mark Watch. I forgot to tell you guys that if you guys want me to go over any cards, let me know in the comment section below. I know I didn't get to go over a lot of your guys' cards, but... I didn't know how much I had to go over. So some of those picks from the last Mark Watch will be on the next one. Uh, if you guys have not smashed that like button, please do. If you're buying any cards off TCG Player, like Hobby Leagues, please use my full link down in the description below. Helps out the channel to know this will cost you. Remember to subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.